Alex and this is a channel where I talk about what I've been knitting and sewing each month so I'm going to put my cup of tea down, I've got a lovely apple and cinnamon tea today and I'm going to pop that down and start by sharing what I'm wearing today. So this is the Maya Zotis dress by Deer and Doe and I've made it just using a viscous chalice fabric with this really lovely full print. I'll stand up so you can see it's got this sort of gathered waist and it's got three, I don't know if you could be able to see that, it's got three buttons, they're a little bit camouflaged. Um, but it's a really nice, simple kind of summer dress and it's got a lovely simple collar. I really um, thought this was a nice detail and quite a simple collar to sew. And yeah, the only thing I changed with this was the sleeves. I shortened them ever so slightly, but apart from that, I've just sewn this pattern as it came out of the packet. I think this was, I've sewn this a few times and this was the first one that I did. I sort of did it as a muslin and yeah, it worked out really well and I've um, actually worn it loads. It has some darts at the front and darts at the back just to give it a little bit of shape. And yeah, it's a really, really comfortable dress. I like that it has a little bit of shape, but it's still loose and flowy and yeah I thought it was a perfect thing to wear today we're in August now and um, we've had some pretty bad weather actually um, I've got some socks that have been blocking for about 12 hours and they're still wet so I'll show you those in a minute but as we're talking about sewing um, I'll just quickly share with you one thing that I've got because I haven't actually got a lot of showing sewing to share with you today um, so I've been doing the Ashton tea um, which is by Helen's Closet and I talked about this last week and I've actually all I've done is I've sewn up the toile so I'll stand up so you can see that um, I wanted to see if the length was right I, I cut out the longer length it comes in two fits so there's a cropped and a slightly longer length so I actually cut the longer length and then I've sort of um, pinned it up right where I want the hem to sit and I was pleasantly surprised because the darts were in the perfect place for me. I don't think I need to make any modifications for this. And um, yeah, I kind of worked out what I wanted to do with the collar. So I did the binding method and it comes with two options. You can do a binding or a facing. And I actually think I'll prefer to do the facing. So I tried the binding on the neck it has bound um, on the sleeves as well but I obviously didn't do that because this is just a test garment but um, yeah seeing how the collar worked out I think I would prefer to actually have a facing on the inside so I think when I start my final I'm going to do that but yeah so it's not very exciting <laughs> and I haven't made much progress since I spoke to you last time but the weather actually hasn't been great so I haven't really felt that excited to sew summery bits so I would like to do that in a nice linen fabric so when I do get that sewn up that's what I plan to do I'm gonna have that in a lovely linen so those are the only sewing type bits I've got today apart from a little something that I've been working on for my shop and I'm going to show you the tiniest sneaky peek because it's actually only sort of in a prototype stage um but I've got I'm going to show you I don't know it's going to be very blown out on the camera but this is a little peek at something that I'm working on for later this year and you can let me know in the comments if you've got any ideas what you think this is going to be. So that's all I'm saying about that right now. <laughs> it's very, very early stages. I've been working on the print that will go with this and um, I'm hoping that I'll have the print finalised next week and I'll be able to send off my screens. But yeah, I've just been playing around with the fabrics and ordering lots of different samples for things. So it's coming together, but that's all I'm going to show you right now. So that's everything for sewing and I'm going to get straight into my knitting and I'm going to show you something that I think is so cute. This is not knitting, but it is fibre and it's crochet. And I've done this adorable little bear and I am a very new crocheter and this is a pattern by her shop is called Little Owlet Shop I think it's Little Owlet Shop all one word on Etsy so if you want to search I know Etsy can be a bit funny for search but yeah if you put Little Owlet Shop all in one word and she has loads of these cute animals and this is actually supposed to be a kitten. I actually bought the kitten pattern but as um, a new person to crochet I was able to figure out how to follow the instructions for the body. I will say you start with the legs, I think it was the legs, yeah 
it was either the legs or the arms, but I think it was the legs. You start with the legs and I will admit to doing them over and over and over and over again until I could work out quite how to do this. But I just couldn't work out how to do the kitten's little, she had a sort of shawl or a cowl and it was a really pretty like lacy cowl and that's why I picked the kitten. Um, but also my ears weren't that great so the kitten's ears go on the top and they didn't look that great either. <laughs> so I looked at her other designs and I changed the face a little bit and um, it actually looks more like the mouse that she has because she has the little mouse ears but I think he looks like a bear. I think he's like a cute bear. I did the same hat that the kitten had and I've just added this little shawl and I actually used the pattern from my dandelion dough so I don't know if you watched um, some of my previous episodes but I did this um, dandelion dough and she has got a lovely little shawl so I thought that um, yeah I thought that was sweet so I did the shawl pattern from dandelion dough and I've done it in this sort of like wrapped crossover style but yeah, I think he's adorable. What do you think? Let me know in the comments if you've ever made any toys. It was quite fun. Um, as I say, I'm really new to crochet. I've crocheted very few things. Um, but yeah, it was quite a fun challenge. And when I'm doing something new like this, I just can't stop. It's like, because with my knitting, I kind of know that if I follow a knitting pattern, what the end result will be like. But with something like this, I was just so eager to work out if I could do this toy that I just couldn't stop. So I was doing it, I think it was like over a weekend. So it was like all Saturday night, I was like kept ripping out these little legs and starting again and trying to follow the instructions. And her instructions were um, clear because it's quite a simple, um, I mean, it was very simple, the crochet stitches that you use for the body. It was only when I got to the um, cow, like I think if you understand crochet terms and you've done those before, I think it would make a lot more sense because it was sort of telling you to crochet into a hole. But when you're new to crochet, it all looks like there's holes. <laughs> so I couldn't work out where I was supposed to be going in. And I probably could have persevered and looked at some more tutorials, but I just thought, oh, I'm a knitter. I'm going to knit him a cute little shawl and have this lovely wrap. But yeah, I'm so pleased with how he turned out. And I persevered. He's got a really nice, um, these were leftovers. I think the body was fiber cucumbria. So not the kind of yarn that I see a lot of crocheters use. So this is, um, I can't remember what cumbria is. I think it's a masham, might be merino, but it's um, a really nice, like durable yarn, very woolly yarn. And yeah, I think it's given him a lovely body. He's got a lovely soft shawl. So I'm really excited and pleased how it turned out. Not sure I want to do much more toy making, <laughs> um, but yeah, there we go. <laughs> it was a fun project and it was the kind of thing that was nice to work on for a weekend. And as I say, I really couldn't stop working on it. I just had to see if I could crochet this little toy. Once I'd seen the pattern, I was just in love and wanted to see if I could make him. But sewing all the little pieces on um, was sort of a little bit messy so it's nice the shawl kind of covers um the where you join the arms and things like that but I don't think I'd be giving it to any babies or children to play with because they could probably pull the head off or something <laughs> so um yeah it's a sweet little thing I have a little area just to the side here where I have a little basket of yarn and I've got some little sort of decorative bits that I put up here and he's sitting nicely with my dandelion dough and some of the these little mice that I've made as well and felt so I think he's very happy there so that's crochet, knitting, and I mentioned that I've got these socks that are still wet 12 hours after blocking and I've actually, this is the wet one and I have a dry one because I'd already knit this sock, uh, I don't know how long ago, but I had blocked it previously so I could show you on another episode how that sock was going. So this is the dry one, this one's still very wet. <laughs> Um, but actually the sun has come out now so probably this afternoon it will dry and these are the Cozy Autumn Socks by This Handmade Life and I've knit them in a fibre coat amble and I just wanted to take it off the blocker just so you could see how lovely and fluid this yarn is. It's a really interesting yarn. I'll show you. I've got, um, this was the little bag that I was using. It's one of my summer berry sock sacks I've got in the shop at the moment if you're interested. But I've got the label. This is 
what it looks like, Fiberco Amber, and it's the Fairhill colour. So this is actually a machine washable yarn. You will have heard me talking about this when I showed these socks previously, but it says it's a conscious blend of washable merino, wool, alpaca, and recycled nylon. So they've basically um, worked to develop a technique that makes the yarn washable but it doesn't use the traditional superwash technique so it uses a more eco-friendly technique to make them that make the yarn washable basically but it is it's sort of more plump and squishy than a regular sort of superwash sock yarn it has a really nice they just feel I don't know if you'll come from camera but they're so squishy and yeah, they've made a lovely sock. This is knit from the top down with a sort of kitchen toe, which isn't my preferred method, but I actually enjoyed knitting these. I've knit these socks several times. It's one of my like go-to patterns. I really like Livia's patterns. And yeah, I think this is, I did, because I had this brown yarn, I thought it'd be nice to these sort of autumn socks. So I'll probably save them for wearing in the autumn, but I'm very interested to know how they're gonna wear with that recycled nylon. That should give them some strength and they're just, yeah, very soft. I think they're gonna be really nice, but I think they will be durable as well. So it'd be nice to see if these will work inside my boots and that kind of thing in the winter. So yeah, so that's my, um, my socks and hopefully that other sock will dry now the sun's come out I couldn't believe it when this morning they were still soaking wet I blocked them I just kitchened up the tone last night and thought oh I'll put it in the water so it's nice for showing you today and yeah still soaking wet <laughs> but the what's this? this is probably the last thing I've got to show you actually it's in one of my summer berry bags and I've got my hand sweater this is a lace weight sweater that I'm making. I haven't got the picture today, um, but it's a really nice sweater. And I put a pin so I could work out how much I'd shown. So if you can see on the camera, there's like a little pink stitch marker there. So it's about five more inches since I showed you last time. And this is the back piece that I'm working on. It's a really beautiful yarn. It's West Yorkshire Spinners Exquisite in the Florence colorway. And this is what it looks like in the cake. It's got a lovely halo. It's very, very soft. I, yeah, I've got the other skein here so you can see what it looks like. Exquisite is a perfect name for this. It's 80% Falkland wool and 20% mulberry silk which is a lovely blend and yeah I'm really enjoying this project. When I started it was so slow going especially doing the rib. Um, I've mentioned before that that was like a slog going through the rib and I now I'm on the body I'm actually really enjoying it. It's a lovely stitch pattern to do. It's very easy to memorize. Um, the decreases are really easy for me to follow that I'm on at the moment. I just keep a little post-it note in my bag and tick off as I go and yeah it's coming up really nicely and this yarn blocks beautifully so I'm really excited to wear it but yeah as I say I'm really enjoying this project now I've sort of been working on it in the evenings and it's a lovely sort of very it's I have to concentrate because of the stitch pattern, which I actually like. It's like a very simple stitch pattern, so I can memorize it, but because it's not stockinette, it does require my focus, which I like because my mind doesn't wander so much. I feel like it's some, it's the kind of project where you can really get into the knitting and switch off from everything else. I'm not thinking about other things while I'm knitting this, but it's not so taxing that I don't feel like working on it in the evening. So it's actually become the perfect mindful project and I'm really enjoying that. If I didn't mention the designer, it's Julie Hoover and the pattern's called Han. I'm going to put links to everything that I've talked about today, all the yarns and patterns and fabrics and everything that I've mentioned in the show notes. There'll be a link just below this video where you can um, click over to the blog and you'll see links for everything. And I also have an email that I send out if you want to sign up to the YouTube channel email list, then every time I put up a video, you'll get an email straight away and it will have all of those show notes there in the email. So you'll be able to have 
all the links really um, before you've even watched the video. So you'll even be able to see if you think it's something that you fancy watching because you'll see what I've been talking about. But yeah, it's really handy to have all those links to refer to as you're watching. You can just click through and yeah, see if there's any yarns and things that you want to purchase as well. I think that's everything that I've got to show you today. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to carry on working on the sweater tonight. I've got, um, it's Friday when I'm filming this, so I've got the weekend ahead of me and I'm definitely going to be working on some projects. I have actually started um, a needlework project that it's so early, it's like I've just been getting all the supplies together, I haven't got anything to actually show you yet, but that's something that I'm going to be working on. I've been doing a lot of like drawing and painting at the weekends as well, so I'll probably do that. I've really been doing, I'm sort of practicing my um, painting and my drawing skills trying to work on that every week and not sort of put that off because it's something that it's really good for my work to be practicing all those skills but it's something that it feels very fun to me so it's easy to put that off and in the week I'm concentrating on more of the mundane worky tasks or the things that have to get done and it's easy for me to put off working on my drawing and painting but that's something that I enjoy at the weekends. So I've kind of got into a bit of a routine of getting up in the mornings and just spending a little bit of time practicing my drawings and I've been buying some new supplies and new paints and things. So I've been practicing working with those as well. So that's what I'll be doing my weekend. You can let me know in the comments what you're going to be doing, what you're doing while you're watching. I love it when you tell me what projects you're working on. That's really fun. I get to sort of look up all the patterns that you tell me about and add all those to my knitting queue as well but thank you so much for watching and I really hope you have a lovely day don't forget to check below for the show notes and if you want to sign up for that email um, that will be down there as well and I'll leave a link to the shop if you're interested in any of the project bags that I was showing you today if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and then you will never miss an episode. So thanks for watching and I will see you soon. Bye bye.